Okay, we're going to restart now and finish up our part three of the dog lab, which is inheritance. And uh, before we get to the actual coding part, let me ask you a little bit about inheritance. And um, let's talk a little bit about things that you may or may not have inherited from your parents. Can someone raise their hand and give me an example of a physical trait that they may have inherited from one of their parents? Anyone? Yes, sir, I can't see who that is. Oh, Mr. Bellow? Sir, can you tell me something you've inherited from one of your parents? Hair color. So uh, if one of your parents has a particular color of hair, you're much more likely to have that hair color. Uh, does anybody have an example of something unusual that they've inherited from their parents? Like maybe your mom can wiggle her ears and you can wiggle your ears or something like that. Anybody have any unusual examples? Yes, Miss Liana? Anything. It could be like a behavior, a skill. Okay, so that's kind of an unusual, but I, I get that a lot. So is it your dad or your mom's handwriting? Your handwriting is like. So you see that your, your dad has a certain handwriting and you have the handwriting like that. So that's another example of something you've inherited. Now, would you agree with me that you don't inherit everything from your parents? Would you agree with me on that? There are obviously is no one else in the world that's exactly like you. And you inherit some things from your parents and other things are just unique about you. Like maybe both your parents are bad at playing cards, but like you're really good at playing cards. That would be an example. So you can see that uh, inheritance explains some parts of why you are the way you are, but it doesn't explain everything. And what we're going to do here is we're going to talk a little bit about how inheritance, which is a powerful concept, uh, can be used in Java to make reuse of existing code quickly. And the idea here is we're going to go over now and we're going to, I'm going to turn off the green foot now and go back to Blue Jay and see if we can bring up the dog code that we had previously programmed. If I go to open recent, there should be some dog, dog projects left over over here. Now you can see I've got two projects open, so I'm gonna turn this one off, just so I don't get confused. And um, I'm going to uh, go back and sort of uh, show you what we had done previously, just as a bit of a review. Uh, so here you can see we wrote this dog code earlier, and we were uh, uh, keeping track of three properties of the dog, its name, its age, and its weight. We wrote a two string so that uh, a user could throw an entire dog into a print statement, and then the dog class would give the print statement instructions on how to print a, a dog. And we talked a little bit about constructors last time we were together. Did we do this together, constructors? Yes? Yeah. Uh, so this is the full featured constructor. This is the zero argument constructor. So when we build a dog, when we when the dog is first born, a constructor is called to help make the dog. And then we built these three methods called getters, which allow us to query the dog for information. And then we had these three methods called setters, which allow us to change information about the dog. And this comprised of our dog class. And then separately, uh, we had this other method, uh, sorry, this other class called the dog tester. And in here, we created a dog called Luna all in one line. We printed the information about Luna. And we had this other dog called Sunny. We added all the information about Sunny. Uh, we printed Sunny. And then we also had this third dog, which we called the zero argument constructor on. And we fed it the information one line at a time. So this is basically the long way of making a dog. And then we printed the information about tuna. So just as a reminder, I'm going to compile and run this puppy and show you what the output looks like. And here you can see are the three lines of printout that I got on each dog. So this was the, the printing of Luna, the printing of Sunny, and the printing of tuna. And what we're gonna do today is something slightly different. So I'm gonna come back into my tester here. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off all the Sunny and Tuna code because we're not gonna be using that today, but I may need it some other day. So I don't wanna destroy all the hard work I put in. So I'm gonna just turn it off by turning them into comments. So a multi-line comment starts with a slash star 
and ends with a star slash. And that turn lets me turn uh, lines into comments. And if I get rid of the comments, then it becomes code again. So now if I were to compile and run this, you can see that only the information about Luna will print. See that that's just the Luna information there. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make some derivative dogs or we're gonna make some new classes that inherit from dog. So our goal today is to discuss this concept of inheritance and inheritance in Java is really easy to do. The whole language is built around inheritance. And so if I say new class, and the first kind of dog we're gonna make is gonna be the poodle. And you can see poodle is capitalized because it's a class. And I'm going to create the poodle. Right now, there's no association between poodle and dog, and I'm going to fix that in a minute. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this class and I'm going to position it underneath the dog here. Maybe make this a little bit bigger because we're going to have a whole bunch of classes added soon. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to open up the poodle class. And as is our habit, we're going to put our name and today's date in here. And today's date happens to be. September 12th, and I'm going to delete all this boilerplate that's in here so that the only thing that you see is this brief definition. Let me just make sure I'm recording correctly here. Okay, very good. All right, and uh, here we are in Poodle. And what I want the Poodle to do is I want it to mimic all the same behaviors of the dog. So you know how the dog has all these abilities to like uh, uh, get, a, get a name, get age, get weight, and also set name, set age, set weight, and also the, um, the two string. I wanna inherit all these capabilities. When you inherit in Java, you inherit all the methods and the properties of the, the class you're inheriting from, except the constructors. Constructors uh, are not, inherited and they're going to ask you this on the ap exam uh frequently on the multiple choice and there may be some stuff on the frqs that asks to see if you understand this or not so the fact that constructors are not inherited while all the other methods are inherited is something that's really important for today's lesson so anyway getting back to our poodle class in order for the poodle to inherit from dog we just need to add two magic words we just need to say extends and then the name of the class that we're inheriting from, in this case, dog. And as soon as I put those two magic words into my file, that's it. I'm ready to go. You can see that it compiles without errors. Now, if I go into the dog tester, just as I built the dog, I can now also build a poodle. And um, I'm going to build a poodle like that. And I, I can't build the poodle this way because I haven't written a fancy constructor for poodle. I only have the basic constructor. But I can uh, build the poodle uh, by going um, this set name, set age, set weight business. So let me copy that code and put it here. And uh, I have to change these to the letter P now because I'm using P as my variable name for the poodle. And uh, who can tell me the name of the world's most famous poodle? Actually, is there a famous poodle? I don't know. Let's call her Polly. We'll call her Polly the poodle. And we'll say Polly is uh, one year old and she's, uh, uh, we'll say she's like a big girl. So she'll be like 11.3 pounds like that. And then we'll print all the information about Polly. like that so look i made a poodle i said her name i said how old she is how much she weighs and now i'm going to print the information notice that i have luna up here already so we're going to compile and run all this information about the poodle uh, oops in the tester I'm going to run the tester so there's luna and there's polly now you notice that polly knew how to print herself even though I did not put any code in here for Polly to teach it how to print itself. And the reason why is that it inherited this two string method from the dog class. So if the dog knows how to print itself, Polly knows how to print itself. 
Now you'll notice here also that if I try to do this, if I go in here and try to put all this information about Kali like this, like that, you'll notice that the compiler will complain and say, hey, you can't do that. There's no constructor like that in Poodle. So what I'd like you to do right now is look at this constructor that I have for dog. And I'd like you to take this code and I would like you to copy it by hitting this copy button and come over to Poodle and paste it right in here and change this from dog to Poodle and get rid of everything here. And we're gonna put the word super here and we're gonna put new name, new age and new weight. And I'll explain this in a second. But let's hit the compile button and run this and I'll show you why it works now. So if I hit the main method, now you can see both Polly and Luna can be created using one line. Now, when I built the constructor for the dog class, I had to put in all this code. But for the poodle constructor, I use this instead. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking the name the age and the weight information that was passed in the constructor for Poodle, and I'm passing it to the dog constructor. So try to understand this. Before the, the Java virtual machine can build a Poodle, it needs to build something else first. In order to build a Poodle, what does it first have to build? Miss Nuha, I got to build a Poodle, but before I can build a Poodle, I got to build something else first. What's the thing I have to build first? The dog, that's right. In order to build a poodle, I got to first build the dog. So a poodle extends dog. So you first build the dog and then any other stuff I need for the poodle. So when I go to build a poodle, I first call the constructor for the dog class. Notice that I don't do this. I don't do that, that doesn't work. I have to use this keyword called super. So I'm calling the constructor for the super class. Dog is a super class of Poodle. We'll talk about this another day. For now, I need to move on. So the next kind of dog I'm going to make is going to be called a Beagle. So I'm going to go Beagle. Here's my Beagle class. And I'm going to go in here. And uh, oh, one other thing I need to do. Let's go back to the dog for a second. I'm gonna add one more method to the dog class. I'm gonna teach the dog how to speak. So let's go over here and go public void speak. And uh, in here, I'm gonna say system out print. Uh, we'll say woof. So the dog will say woof. Now I've given the dog a new trick. Uh, I've taught it how to speak. Question, does the poodle also now know how to speak? Mr. Brian, sir, I, I added this code for the dog. My question to you is, does, can the poodle speak? Sir, the poodle can speak. Can you explain to me why the poodle suddenly knows how to speak? Oh, okay. Can you explain to me why, sir? It extends the dog. So anytime the dogs learn new tricks, the poodles pick up the tricks for free. So now in the tester code, I can go like this. I can go D dot speak. And now Luna will speak. But I can also go like this. I can go P dot speak. And Polly will speak. So let's run this now and show you that both dogs now have the ability to speak. So you can see here, look, here's Luna speaking. And here's Polly speaking. You see how they both can speak now? Okay, so now we're going to go and look at this Beagle code. And once again, I'm gonna put my name in here. And today's date is 9, 12. 
And I'm going to get rid of all this spoiler plate here. And like the poodle before it, I want the beagle to inherit from the dog. And I'm going to ask Mr. Mitty, sir, do you remember without looking, sir, what are the two magic words I use to give the beagle all the capabilities of the dog? Extends dog. Now the beagle is identical to the dog, except I need to change one thing. You see, the dog, when it speak, it says woof, but beagles don't really say woof. Beagles howl. So what I want to do is I want to make the beagle exactly the same as the dog with respect to all the other methods, but the speak method, I want to be unique to the beagle and different from the dog. So what I'm going to do under Beagle, I'm going to say at override, public void speak. Notice that I'm overriding the parent's speak method. So if I look at the dog here, and you can see that the dog has a public void speak, and the speak method takes no arguments. So when I override, I have to match the signature exactly. So if the dog has public void speak with no arguments, the override method has to have public void speak with no arguments. And I'm going to put in here system out println howl. So whereas the regular dog will just say woof and the poodle will also say woof, the beagle will now instead howl. So now going back to my test code, I want you to create a beagle. Uh, don't even have to set any of its information. Just create the beagle and make it speak. Please do that now. Create a beagle. Uh, don't put any arguments here. Just create the beagle and make it speak. Please do that now. Who has not helped me yet? Mr. Uh, I'll give you a minute first. Okay, Mr. Diego, sir, how do I make a beagle? We're gonna just make it like that because we haven't created the fancy constructor for the beagle. So the compiler only gives us the basic constructor. Okay, sir, how do I make this beagle speak now? Okay, very good, sir. So now you can see Luna is speaking. Poodle Polly is speaking and the Beagle is speaking. When I run this code now, you see now that the two dogs, the, the regular dog and the Poodle say woof, but now the Beagle says howl. The Beagle says howl. So the power of Java's inheritance is that I can just add these two words and pick, pick up all the capabilities of the dog and then I can go back and change the methods I don't like and replace them. So I can get a custom dog that starts off with like a generic dog, and then I can customize it for all the special things that it can do. We've got two other dogs to build. So the first dog I'm going to build is going to be called the Basenji. And I'm going to put that one right here. And we're going to do a similar thing for Basenji. We're going to put our name here and today's date. And I'm going to get rid of the boilerplate. And I'm going to extend dog. Now, the Basenji, you may not be aware, is the silent dog from Africa. It does not speak. So you tell the Basenji to speak, it's silent. So we have to find some way to turn off the speak method for the dog, because when the Basenji goes to speak, we don't want it to say woof. We don't want it to say anything. Now, you might be tempted to do this, like uh, with the Beagle, I went in here and I overrode the speak. Let's copy this code from the Beagle over to the Basenji. And then we could go like this, right? We could go like that. Right? That would do the trick. But here I'm writing code that doesn't do anything. That doesn't make any sense. There should be an easier way. So I need to replace this print statement with something. 
Can someone here talk to their partner and try and figure out what would be a good replacement for this print statement so that the speak method doesn't actually do anything? Mr. Ethan, sir, Mr. Burnett, sir, if you were going to write a method that didn't do anything, what would you put in here instead of println? Say it, sir. You're thinking of the right thing. Go ahead, say it. Nothing is right. So that makes a lot more sense. Now, there's one little problem with writing a code that has nothing in it. If someone were to look at this code, what might they er erroneously conclude? Uh, Mr. Gabe, looking at this code, what might you think Mr. Sarkar accidentally did? Mr. Mr. Gabe might think, looking at this code, that Mr. Sarkar forgot to write the method. Can you see how you might think that? So we're going to just put a little comment in here saying left empty on purpose because the Senji do not speak. And this is the, uh, the first example we've come across this year where we're using a comment for a useful purpose, right? We're using it to inform the reader, hey, I left this thing empty on purpose. It wasn't an accident. So now let's go back and go into the dog tester and create a Basenji and have it speak. Please try that now on your own. Morning, sir. We've got about a half hour left. I've got about 20 minutes of instruction remaining, and then you can have a full 10 minutes of free time. Ms. Sujan, can you tell me how to create a Basenji and make it speak? Okay. Okay, let's run this puppy now. Compile and run it. And you can see, here's the beagle howling. Look what happens though when it's the Basenji's turn to speak. Nothing comes out. See, nothing happens. Okay, so to show you that a little bit more clearly, let me just put in some extra print statements in here so it will be obvious. Like this. I'll put this in before and after the speak so it'll be obvious that the Basenji didn't actually say anything. So let's run it. Now you can see these two lines come right after one another because the Basenji, when it speaks, nothing happens. Okay. And we've got one more dog to build today, and that is the Chihuahua. So let's come over here and build the Chihuahua. I would like you to go and create a new class called Chihuahua and have it inherit from dog, clean out the boilerplate, and then wait for me. Please do that now. It's Chihuahua is spelled Chihuahua. Chi, C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A. -H -H That's how you spell Chihuahua. While you're doing that, I will play a Chihuahua video for us. Let's see here. This is a really famous dog. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know what the dog's name is, but this is the Taco Bell Chihuahua. Let's see here. Uh, how about this one? Okay, I don't know what that has to do with tacos, but in any case, uh, that is uh, the, the Chihuahua in the Taco Bell commercials. All right, so now I need some help getting back to my code here in terms of making a Chihuahua. And uh, who are we back to here? Mr. Owen, 
Sir, can you help me make a chihuahua? What do I do, sir? Sir, I need to press some buttons here. New class. Should I capitalize the chihuahua? Yes, because classes in Java should be capitalized. So there's the chihuahua. And I'll just position it here. And then I'm going to open up this puppy. And once again, we'll put our name in here and today's date. Okay, Mr. Owen, sir, you're up now. What do I do now? Okay, let's delete the boilerplate. Okay, sir, now what do I do? Okay, so we're going to do extends dog like that. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever uh, had a Chihuahua or have a relative with a Chihuahua or played with a Chihuahua. What's different about a Chihuahua versus most dogs? Anybody know? What's different about it? They're loud and they talk a lot. And so let's just say that um, our Chihuahua is going to talk twice as much as a regular dog, twice as much. So once again, I'm going to override the... Um, I'm going to override the speak method and I want you to put some code in here that will allow the Chihuahua to say whoop twice. Please write that code for me now. Put some code in here that allows the Chihuahua to whoop twice. Okay. I think we've gone around the room. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, uh, back to you, Mr. Mitty. Sir, what do I put in here to make the Chihuahua speak twice? Oh, that's very good, sir. Actually, I hadn't even thought of that. I could go woof, woof all on one line of code. I like it, sir. So we could do that. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem. So let, let, let's just run this, by the way. Let's go over the dog tester. Uh, I'll create a Chihuahua here. You do this too now. New Chihuahua. Right. And we're going to say uh, C dot speak. And now let's run this. So you can see, uh, Mr. Mitty, uh, put them both on the same line and that worked, that worked fine. Uh, so uh, that's one way to do it. Here's the problem. If, if later on I change my mind about what the dog says and I change this wolf to bark, right? Like that. W would the Chihuahua's uh, speak method automatically change to bark? What do you think, Kevin? Kevin, if I, if I go and change the dog's instructions later from speak from wolf to something else, will the Chihuahua code automatically change? No, it will not. So let's run. Let's try that out. So if I compile and run this now, right? Now you see. Now you can see that uh, the regular the regular dogs are saying bark, but the Chihuahua is still saying wolf. So the problem here is I don't want to put wolf in here uh, because what I want to do is I want to tell the compiler. I want to do what the regular dog does, but I want to do it twice. So you might be tempted to do this. Look, I go like that, right? Here's the problem. When you, when you call this speak method, the compiler is not sure, do you mean this speak method or do you mean the speak method in the dog class, this one? So what the compiler does is it calls the closest one. And here the closest one is this one. So instead of calling the dog speak method, it's going to call the Chihuahua speak method, which is going to come down here, which is going to call this one, which is going to come down here. And we're going to get in this kind of infinite loop. So that's not what we want. So what we want to do instead is we want to tell the compiler that we want to call the super classes speak method. In other words, we want to call the dog speak method. But this is the wrong way to do it. That will not compile. Can anyone guess what we put here instead of dog? To mean the super classes speak method. Uh, Miss Nuha, what do you think? Super is right. You can see super is a keyword. It's colored blue here. And what this means now is we're going to call the dog speak method, but we want to do this two times. So let's put two of them in there. And now we have ourselves a really noisy Chihuahua. Every time the dog says woof, the Chihuahua says woof woof. So let's compile and run this. 
and we're going to run it now. And you can see, I got to set to bark still. Hold on, let me change it back to wolf. And now when I run it, you can see, look, here's a regular dog. It says wolf. Here's the poodle that is identical to the dog. It says wolf. Here's the Basenji. It's got its own speak method. It says howl. Here you can see that the Basenji doesn't say anything at all. This was the beagle, excuse me. The Basenji doesn't say anything at all. And finally, the Chihuahua talks twice as much, twice as much. Look, look, in like 20 minutes, I was able to build four different dog classes and get them all running because the base code for dog was already developed. And all these dogs now, they know how to print themselves. They can get information, set information. What I'd like you to do now is go back to this uh, Chihuahua. And I would like you to fill in its name, its age, and its weight. And then I'd like you to print all the information about the Chihuahua. And that'll be the last exercise for today. So please do that now. Go ahead and set the name, age, and weight for the Chihuahua, and then print the information about the Chihuahua. Okay, Ms. Liana, can you tell me how do I set the name for the Chihuahua? I want to set it now. So I want to set it like I set it for the poodle. Look. So what do I do here? Let me make this bigger for you. Okay. What do I do here, Liana? I want to set the name for the Chihuahua. Look, look here, look, look, look. Look what I did for the poodle. I want to do the same thing for the chihuahua. Okay, so tell me what to type. So P is the poodle. I don't want to change the poodle. I want to change the chihuahua. You, can you not see this, miss? Yes. Okay. And what would be a good name for a Chihuahua, Miss? Chip. Okay. And now we want to set the age of the Chihuahua. Okay. And how old is Chip? Okay, and lastly, we want to set the weight of the Chihuahua. And how much does the Chihuahua weigh? Okay, we'll say that uh, it's, it'll be like uh, 1.7 pounds. Okay, and now we want to print the information about the Chihuahua. So now we do the system out print business. And what do I put in here, Miss? Very good, like that. So let's compile and run this. This will be the last thing we do today. And here you can see all the information for Chip has come out right here. Okay, you have five minutes of free time now. Uh, I would implore you to go and look at RuneStone where you are. And uh, if you haven't been keeping up, please work home every day a little bit of runestone unit one unit one is flying by we're more than half done you need to keep up on your runestone otherwise you got free time now